It is with a heavy heart that I bring you news of the passing of Michael Brooks, who is the host of The Michael Brooks Show. He was also a co-host on Majority Report with Sam Cedar. And we learned about this today when uh, the official Twitter account for The Michael Brooks Show tweeted this out. Um, and like everyone, I'm kind of grappling with this. And I just kind of feel shocked. Um, I feel really numb. I don't really know how to process this. It's it's difficult because, you know, this is someone who was so special, so important to the left and to the world. And, you know, when you see, you know, currently he's trending on Twitter, all of the people remembering him, you really see the impact that he had on the world. And it was it was so large. I mean, this was someone who was such a kind soul I mean, we didn't deserve him, but because he was around, because he shared his political commentary, I think that the world is genuinely a better place because of him. And that sounds corny and cliche, but I mean, let me tell you how influential Michael Brooks was just to me personally. Um, had it not been for Michael Brooks and the Michael Brooks show... I probably would still be a social democrat. Like, I feel as if I'm an anti-capitalist because I was so influenced by Michael Brooks. I mean, his commentary, the way that he reached his conclusions, like, you really, you trust what he he said because everything was so well thought out. It came from a place of empathy and humanity and love and respect. And he tried to cultivate the sense of international solidarity among workers that was really lacking. And, you know, it didn't matter what section of the left you were on. Like, he truly was kind to everyone. And, you know, him and I were talking for a while now about collaborating. And just a couple of weeks ago, we talked about, you know, um, doing a collab. I wanted to bring him on my show. I literally have, you know, his book displayed on the set because I read it and I loved it. And once again, like his thinking here, it really, it like to me anyways, it helps to recenter where I am politically, what I focus on. Like it helps to recalibrate. Everything that he says is, it's always well-reasoned and thoughtful and, you know, what he means to the left, it you just can never put that into words. And my heart goes out to his family, his girlfriend, um, you know, the crew at Majority Report, Sam, Jamie, Matt, everyone. This is something that, you know, it, it's just, it's so shocking. He's so young. He was a couple years older than me. And, you know, I really, I looked up to him. Like, I live on the opposite side of the country, but, you know, it really felt like, I, I knew him so well because I I was such a fan of his show. You know, when you when you have someone as such a crucial part of your indie media diet and you watch this person and you laugh with them, um, you grow with them, you kind of find yourself because this person is so influential. It feels like you you know you're so close and so it's it's really hard to even like grapple with this. And you know, I'm I'm feeling the same sense of shock and really inability to collect my thoughts that I felt when my dad passed in, in March because there's a sense of disbelief at first. And then you have this really long period of, you know, just kind of going through the motions of, of you know, daily life. You, you like, you don't pretend that it didn't happen, but you, you just, you be as normal as you can be until, you know, the fog in your head kind of clears. And then it feels like um, it, it, it really hits you, right? There's this deep sense of sadness that this person isn't going to be around again. That this person doesn't get to, you know, experience the joys of life that we all take for granted, the simple things like listening to music or eating food, something so simple. You know, this young life is gone and will never be around again and it's really hard to digest this news and you feel such sadness for them and you know you know you, you know the impact that he had you know on all of us but the family you know that he had you know they're they're feeling more hurt than everyone but it's just there's there's not really there are no words to really put it into um 
into the right way. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm struggling to collect my thoughts. This is, this is really hard. Um, I really, really admired and looked up to Michael Brooks. I really, um, respect him so much and enjoyed his show and laughed so many times. I mean, he didn't just help me with my own political evolution and where I am today, but I mean, this is someone who, whose comedy, just his impressions, you know, picked me up when I myself was in a bad place. It just put a smile on my face. I mean, this is just, this is a loss that you can't really put words to. Um, the left will never be the same without Michael Brooks. But I will say that, you know, we have to never let his legacy be forgotten. This man was a legend. And what he wanted, we have to we have to carry out. We have to try to carry out and make his vision a reality. And it you know, it takes time. We on the left are very ambitious. We have we have goals that we're not going to fully see through, you know, um in one lifetime, let alone multiple, but so long as we lay the groundwork to carry out this vision of empathy and solidarity, then we're honoring Michael Brooks's legacy. Um, and I'm not really sure what else to say um, about this. It's, it's you know, it's just, I don't know. It It's not something that a lot of us are going to understand right now. We're going to, you know, feel really vulnerable and emotional and you know we're not going to know what to do with ourselves right like when I heard the news I kind of just started cleaning like doing random things because you know you you don't know what to do with yourself like this news really hits everyone like a ton of bricks you know and everyone who watched the Michael Brooks show you know you felt like you knew him this was someone who made you laugh, you know, and uh, made you smile and educated you. So it, it's hard. But, you know, for all of us, I think that we have to try to take some time for self-care because this affected all of us. And, you know, honor his legacy. Don't let him be forgotten. And, you know, just try to um, carry out his legacy the best that we can. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of people right now that are hurting because of you know, his passing, um, and it's going to be a really tough couple of, uh, of months and years, you know, we're never going to get over this, you know, but we do have to find a way to continue living, you know, um, and take what he put into the world and use what he gave us to grow further. Um, you know, use the logic that he exercised in examining these political topics and apply that to our own, you know, uh, political analysis. And um, yeah, I'll end that there because I'm kind of just rambling. But, you know, just take care of yourself and really, you know, um, hug the people around you, call them. You know, um, let them know how much you appreciate them because life is truly fragile. You know, it's, there's been so much loss, you know, this year. Um, and, you know, we can't take things for granted. We can't take each other for granted and we can't take life for granted. So, you know, um, Michael would have wanted all of us to keep on fighting and, uh, and keep on keeping on. So, that's just what we have to do. Um, so that's what I'll, I'll say. Um, rest in peace, Michael Brooks. You absolutely meant the world to me. You were a role model to me. You are someone who I looked up to and respected so much. And um, you will forever be in our hearts, comrade. We absolutely love you. Well, uh, let me be clear. You know, the white race doesn't disappear overnight. <laughs> but if you look <laughs> at the uh, the longer trends, uh, white mortality increasing, fewer white babies 
uh, being born. Uh, look, look, look. The, the devil isn't thrown back into a cave overnight. <laughs> the arc of history is long, but it bends towards Sharia. <laughs> so you do like like just Obama is that dude, except it's all like... You have these uh, bitter people in hip-hop uh, clinging to their gay mafia to try to silence people like Lord Jamar. <laughs> uh, uh, what, what, what Brother Jamar say is that when uh, 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 the gay Arati got into the hip-hop game, see, 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 a lot of these brothers, they're on the down low. <laughs> and they come out and they talk like they run the game. Meanwhile, I know for a fact that he sucked Elton John's dick. <laughs> so it becomes kind of uh, difficult to take them seriously as artists. Let me be clear. <laughs> there was a, a gay rapper that flowed. I would give him props. But there just has never been one. And there will never be one, I fear. Uh, look, uh, uh, can a gay uh, rapper flow? Theoretically, yes. Practically, no.